bees have quickly kind of coming up the rear, so to speak. Ew, that's a disgusting phrase. Is that actually how you're supposed to say that? Hey you guys, so today's video is going to be the first favorites video I've done in quite some time. I think the last one I did, sorry there's a piece of hair in my lip gloss. The last one that I did was sometime in March, maybe late February, I don't recall. But as you guys saw earlier in the month of April, I did kind of a big collective haul. I'm still testing a lot of stuff out, so I can't definitively say if they're favorites or not. But everything in this video are absolute love of my life favorites right now. I will link everything in the description box down below. Some of the links are affiliate links and if you choose to use them, I do get a small commission which helps support the channel, but obviously you don't have to use them at all if you choose not to. Um, as far as today's collection of favorites, we got like a lot of hair, we got some skincare, we got some makeup, we got a little bit of everything. If you like the makeup look that I'm wearing right now, I did a tutorial on it. I don't know if it'll be up before or after this video, but I will try to link it some so you guys can find it if you want to recreate this look. Other than that, check the down bar for links on my social media platform. Subscribe if you are new here. And if you're not new here, hey, what's up? How's your mom and him? And uh, yeah, let's just get started. So I feel like as a whole, I have been talking a lot more about hair on my channel. And that's probably got more to do with the fact that I take better care of my hair now than I once did. I don't wear extensions anymore. I'm trying to keep it healthy. I'm trying to keep my color in place, especially considering the fact that I can't go to the hairstylist yet. I'm so excited to finally get to go back. I need an appointment so bad. As most of you know, I recently bleached, well, not very recently anymore, I guess, but I bleached my hair not too long ago and I've been testing out different types of like purple depositing products. And I believe the last favorites video that I did, I talked about the Redken purple shampoo. No, it was, the, yeah, it was the purple shampoo. I have since stopped using that because I found something so much better, like so much better in fact, that a few videos ago, I remember like editing the footage and I was like, my hair looks so dark. Like it looked like all of the blonde had almost completely gone out of my hair. And I picked this up and started using it and it feels like my blonde is a lot brighter. It's not brassy anymore. This is like probably the best color depositing product I've ever used in my life. This is the Shuamora Color Luster Balm in Cool Blonde. So this is a conditioner. First of all, as per usual, I must discuss the smell. It smells so friggin' good. I actually used to get my hair done at a Shuamora salon, so I have a lot of experience with their products and have forgot how great they are. Right now I'm pretty ride or die for Kerastase, but I think I'm gonna start stocking up on some more Shuamora because this is the best product I've ever used on blonde hair in order to keep it cool toned and bright. It's extremely pigmented. I'm not gonna bother trying to squeeze it out because it's really thick, but you can kind of see like it is no friggin' joke. So the way that I use this is depending on how many times a week I wash my hair, I will use this at least once a week after I shampoo and before I do a kind of deep conditioning treatment. So I shampoo my hair, rinse it out, squeeze out all the excess, put this thoroughly and intensely through the ends, like particularly the brighter areas of my hair, like right here. I put a shower cap on, let it sit there for three to five, sometimes 10 minutes, rinse it out, put a hair mask on, rinse that out, and my hair is bright and healthy. I love the way this stuff smells. It's not particularly drying. That Redken stuff, it was drying me out. Like it wasn't the most drying thing I've ever used in terms of color depositing products, but it did eventually really make my hair super dry and brittle, but this does not, it works amazing. I'm gonna just do all the hair at the top. This is the Oribe Dry Texturizing Spray. So I know I have talked about this in a video recently, but I don't know what video it was. It could be the recent hair tutorial I did, or it could be the last favorites video I did. Basically, I asked you guys if you had any experience with this because for a long time I've been using the Way texture spray and I really like it. It smells amazing. I love the way it smells and it works, but I feel like I blow through it like crazy. Like I feel like I can go through a can of that a month and I don't even do my hair every day. Not to mention it started like, it doesn't have it on this packaging obviously, but on the way packaging, there started to be like this, it looked like glue, like hot glue was just forming all around the nozzle. I had to peel it off to get the nozzle to use. It's pretty expensive. Like 
there's so many pros for that product, but enough cons that I was really on the market for something different. So I asked you guys if you had any experience with this because I hear about it all the time. Enough of you guys said it's the bomb, picked it up, and I agree. What I think I like about this the most is that this dispensing system, I don't know, I'm not a hairstylist, don't judge me, it goes from like zero to holy shit in like 2.5 seconds. Like, look at this. Like, it's so powerful. It just gets it really, really well dispersed into your hair. I pretty much only use texturizing hairsprays, and that's been the case for me for quite some time. I don't like a crunchy, thick, kind of shellac hold. Now, if you guys have any recommendations for hairspray that do not do that, let me know. But a texturizing hairspray, I feel like, for me, makes my hair just look really airy and kind of like beachy, but like I tried really hard, but not super hard, but it holds the style. So I love texturizing hairsprays. If you guys have any other recommendations, let me know. But this one, I have to say might be my new fave. I've tried the Bumble and Bumble one. I've tried the Way one. I want to say there's another one I've tried. I have to really try to think about to remember which one it was. But this one so far might be the official holy grail i love it i love it it smells amazing i want to try more orbe hair products let me know if you have any experience with them i want to try them last hair product this is the kerastase this is called the nutriv eight hour magic night serum i did talk about this in my hair routine video but at the time it was still relatively new to me now i've had it for about two months and i can tell you this is a great product so i go as long as I can between washing. Now, I find that the more I work out, the more frequently I have to wash, but if I can avoid that, I like to try to. But at the same time, the longer I go without washing, it, it's like this bullshit upside down situation. I end up with greasy roots and dry ends, and it's so annoying. So I'm dousing my head with dry shampoo to try to combat that, and then my ends only get drier. So what I do is I put this in my hair at night before I go to bed, just like a regular serum. I hate saying the word serum if you guys are new here. Is there any way to say it that doesn't sound like you're making a noise? Like, like if I was an animal in the wild, that would be my mating call, like serum? Serum? I don't know what it is about that word. Anyway, this stuff works amazing on your hair. I put it in almost every night. When I wake up, my hair just feels softer, conditioned, healthy, hydrated. It's such a dope product and I would like to try more of these kind of overnight hair serums. This is a little bit too thick, I would imagine, to wear during the day. I mean, if you have extremely dry hair, perhaps, but this is just awesome at night. It's kind of like a leave-in conditioner that you can apply day after day. It doesn't build up or make your hair get funky and gross. All you're left with is just super hydrated hair. I love this. I just want you guys to know that I recorded the entirety of this second half of this video without turning my microphone on. Then I knocked everything on my desk over, broke some stuff. Like I'm just killing it in all regards right now. It is the worst when you have to re-record something that you're just talking about on the fly because it's like, how do I manufacture interest in this when I'm so irritated that I have to redo it? But anyway, in the haul that I talked to you guys about that I filmed in April, I will link it down below or up here. I told you guys that I was picking up a lot of essences that is a product that I was previously very unfamiliar with. I've never tried it before. I ended up picking up three. One of them is a total dud. It broke my skin out like nothing I've ever seen before. In fact, I probably should get it and tell you guys about it. Hold on. So this is the Artemisa Time Revolution something from Misha or Misha. This broke me out like nothing I have ever used in my life has broken me out. This is one of those things where I put it on and then within an hour or two, I had deep cystic painful breakouts in places I don't ever get breakouts. Like I had one right here in the crook of my nose. I had one at the tip of my lip, like right here at my cupid's bow. And they were so deep in there, they were not coming out. They hurt so bad. Like this is one of the worst products I think I've ever used now. I can't speak for anybody else. This might work amazing on somebody else's skin, but for me, this was like putting battery acid on my face. I wanna say I'm gonna rehome it to somebody, but I don't feel like I'm that evil of a person. So this was a big miss for me. The other essence I picked up, I haven't used quite enough to have a full opinion on, but the one that I can tell you about is the COSRX Advanced Snail 96 Power Essence. This is snail mucin. Snail mucin is exactly what it sounds like. Apparently it truly comes from snails. And I guess they have some nice little cruelty free way of obtaining the snail mucin. Essentially what this product is for is to bring a lot 
of hydration. And in my case, it also soothes my skin quite a bit. Now I've talked about this before, so I'm gonna talk about it again. And I appreciate everyone who messaged me over the past couple videos where I've discussed this and tried to help me. Um, I told you guys that I use tretinoin, a pretty aggressive level of it. I use 0.1 and I have to use that because it is the only thing, the only thing that stops my skin from being extremely, extremely acneic. Typically I can use any makeup, any skincare, whatever in the world and have no sensitivity as long as I am using my tretinoin. But when I have a breakout coming in and I can feel it, like I know a lot of you guys probably know what I'm talking about. I have to stop that sucker in its tracks because if that breakout comes to fruition, I will scar. I scar every single time I get a breakout, just like a little red dot where that breakout was. So it's a real uphill battle for me to ever have like truly even toned skin. So breakouts on their own are already obnoxious enough, but couple that with the fact that I'm going to have like a little, little remnant of it that sucks even more. So the only thing that I can do to combat a breakout is to go in with a heavy dose of tretinoin, even if it's just a spot treat it. It's in one particular area where I feel a breakout coming in. But the downside of that is inevitably I will have irritation and my skin starts to peel. Some mornings I wake up and go give my husband a kiss and he's like, Ooh, you're peely. Like it just comes on hard and heavy. The only thing that combats that for me is a lot of hydrating products. People keep telling me like, try this, try that, space it out this much, space it out that much. And the only thing that works is hydration. Now I use a hyaluronic acid serum from Skin Medica at night and that has helped quite a bit, but adding this into my routine as well has truly changed the way my skin is reacting to my tretinoin and my retinol formulas. I do not get nearly, nearly as peely, nearly as peely, peely, whatever, <laughs> anymore. It's really rare and when I do, I'm not peeling for as long and kind of the dry patches are not as pronounced as they normally are. I can always tell just how bad and like dry patchy I'm getting when I fake tan. I actually have it right now. It kind of looks like almost like a little beard right here on my chin where the tanner just clings to the dry patches. And that's because I haven't been using this in the past couple of days, but when I consistently keep this in my rotation in the morning and at night, it really helps with that. And it also soothes my skin. Like I feel instantly like my skin calms down the redness, maybe any of the physical sensitivity. I feel like this is a dope product. It's super, super reasonably priced. I want to say this was between 12 to $18. You can get this at SoCo Glam. You can get this at Yes Style. You can get this at iHerb. It's a great product. It's probably one of those things I'm always gonna have in my kit and caboodle. This is the I'm from Honey Mask. I picked this up because Gothamista or Gothamista, I don't know if I'm saying her name correctly, did a video where she compared the pharmacy honey mask to this. Now, I cannot say definitively if I think one of them is better than the other because this is the only one I've tried. And I also can't say definitively if they're intended to do the same thing because I only know a very, very little amount about the pharmacy one. Masks for me are like hydrating, soothing, brightening, something along those lines, not exfoliating. This stuff is amazing. It's like, it is the most soothing, hydrating, gorgeous mask I've ever purchased for such, not even for such a low price point, like maybe period. This mask has a lot of actual honey in it. I cannot remember the actual figure. The jar says 38.7%. So I don't know if that's referring to the honey, but I will leave it annotated somewhere around here. It even smells like honey. It's, oh, it's so dope. Like you can kind of taste it. I don't recommend eating it, but if it gets in your mouth, you can taste the honey. It's so, so thoroughly packed with that active. I've talked about this on my channel a million times. I really believe in primers. I use face masks. So when I'm getting ready to do my makeup, I'll do it every time I do my makeup, just when like I'm trying to go for something. I use a mask of some sort. So that's what I've been using this for. And I can truly tell a huge difference in how my makeup looks on top of this, on top of my skin when I use this. The only downside I will say is this is a mask that is better the longer that you wear it. So I don't feel like you really get the full benefits of it when you only wear it for like 10, 15 minutes, the way you do a traditional mask. I have a mask for that, which I will tell you about in a minute. If you're willing to, or have the time to wear this for like an hour, you'll be shocked. Your skin is so glowy and soft and hydrated. And once again, it's very soothing to my skin. It's non irritating. It doesn't break me out. Once again, another product, I'm pretty sure 
I will always have in rotation. It works so beautiful. The other mask that I've been using and really loving is the Fresh Black Tea Instant Perfecting Mask. This mask is not inexpensive at all. I think this one's around $80 or so. And to be honest, I could not let you know with absolute certainty if this is any good for your skin, truthfully, but I can tell you that it makes your skin look good. There's a big difference. Some ingredients can like make your skin have the appearance of certain qualities you're looking for, but might not be actually very good for your skin. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? So don't quote me on this one being some sort of powerhouse of awesome ingredients, but I can tell you it makes my skin look amazing when I use it. And as you can see, I've made a pretty good dent in it. I definitely don't use this every day, not at all. I use it when I have to do my makeup. So if I don't have time to sit and let this hang out on my face while I read or have breakfast or something, then I just pop this one on for 10 or 15 minutes and it's like my skin is beaming through my makeup. I can even see the benefits of it later on that night. Like so tonight when I go wash my face, my skin will still be super glowy and hydrated from this mask. Once again, I don't use it every day. I don't even mask every day. I think my skincare routine is really holding down the fort in terms of getting the job done. So masks to me are very supplemental and I'm very realistic about what I expect them to do. And I know the effects of them are very short term. So if I want my skin to look amazing, why wouldn't I want it to look amazing before I put makeup on it so my makeup looks better? Does that make sense? That's my train of thought. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is these are dope. Next is a foundation in the haul that I keep talking about. I talked to you guys about how the main purpose of it was to replenish my stash. I was almost completely out of foundation. I think I had like one or two bottles left. And I know that might sound like a lot for the average person, but for someone who does their makeup all the time for work the way that I do, I kind of have to have a good little selection on hand. All the foundations I ordered except for one were foundations that I have used many, many times and I knew I liked. Cause like obviously I can't go to Sephora and like swatch and pick something out. I just wanted to get stuff I knew that I would enjoy, so I'd just get the job done. So the only exception to that was this. This is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation. And this is a beautiful, beautiful foundation. I was prepared not to like this. I just, I don't know what it is, man. When I feel like a lot of people are talking about something, I just, I'm a contrarian by nature for whatever reason. It's amazing, ask my husband. Was prepared fully not to like this, but I love it. I don't like it, I friggin' love it. Now. Comparing this to the MAC Face and Body Foundation, which I'm also a huge fan of, I thought initially they'd be pretty similar, and in some ways they are, and in some ways they are not. MAC Face and Body, for me personally, is not a foundation I can wear for a super long period of time. That is something I can throw on when I'm running errands for a little bit, or like if I'm going to dinner and I know I'm only going to be out for a few hours, I can wear it and I look glowy and fresh, and like I just, my skin is amazing. It doesn't look like makeup on me, it looks like I just have the best skin ever. This does the same thing, but it wears better on me. So the MAC Face and Body is like a true sheer to buildable foundation. When you put it on, it almost looks like nothing perhaps during your first pass. It obviously depends on your, your skin situation, but you can build face and body up to be full coverage if you want. This I don't think is nearly as sheer as face and body. I think this is much more medium and easily buildable to full. But the good thing about it is it definitely looks like skin. I love a dewy glowy foundation and not a big fan of the matte ones. And this truly is one of the more skin like beautiful foundations I've used in such a long time. In fact, if I ever do pro makeup again, I probably would have to have this in my kit. It's so good. Next are some lashes and my last favorites video. I might be doing this two times and I don't mean to, but I think in my last favorites video, I talked to you guys about the house of lashes, iconic light and how that was kind of my go-to. I have since tried out the house of lashes, Allura light spelled A L L U R A. These have quickly kind of coming up the rear, so to speak. Ew, that's a disgusting phrase. Is that actually how you're supposed to say that? These are coming, these are coming in a close second. These are still really similar to the Iconic Light in that the band is really thin. It feels like you're wearing nothing on the eye. They definitely give some dimension and like glam to the eye without taking over the entire lid space. Like I've said before, I have hooded eyes. So if my lashes are too thick and too bossy, 
you just can't even see my eyelid whatsoever and I used to really be into that but now I'm slowly trying to get something a little more chill and these definitely give it to me the only thing I will say about House of Lashes that I'm not crazy about and they're not the only brand that does this at all but I kind of feel like there's huge inconsistencies in the way these lashes look you might not be able to tell on camera but these do not look as dense as these to me like they're just a little different every time and maybe it's unrealistic for me to expect that you could get the same exact lash every single time and every single batch but that is the only thing I don't love about these so I would prefer to be able to buy these in person like if I go to Ulta I can figure out which ones look the way I want them to look but right now I can only order so that is the one downside with these but outside of that I truly love these lashes I feel like they wear really well for a long time in other words I can wear these like 10 15 times and they hold up really well so really like these last is an eyeliner I feel like I've been talking about this eyeliner so much lately because I've been using it to create this eye look I'm wearing right now which is my current go-to favorite it's the one I told you I just had a tutorial on and it uses this eyeliner a lot in the look it's it's kind of like the foundation of this look now obviously you can use any brown eyeliner in the world but once I started using this a lot more frequently, I just was like reintroduced to my old love of it. I used to have this in my makeup, by the way, I don't think I said what it's called. It's Costa Riche from MAC. I used to have this in my makeup kit and I used it on literally everybody because it looks amazing on literally everybody, especially green eyes. If you have green or blue eyes, this is even better, period. It's just all around a universally flattering color and it's because it just has this really pretty warm like intensely warm undertone at least for most eyeliners a lot of eyeliners I see that are brown or just a little cool toned not super distinguishable from a black except maybe they're a little less harsh but this just on the eye and anywhere you put it is just so warm and like Oh, I don't know how to explain it. It's beautiful. So like I said, I use it to create this look. It's all over my lid. It's in the outer corner. It's underneath my lash line. I wear it in the waterline all the time and it still deepens up the look and gives a lot of focus to the eye, but it doesn't take over. Does that make sense? Like sometimes with an eye look, I want it to be glamorous and like I did something, but I don't want to have to bust out a full blown dark eye. And that's where this one kind of gets you in that sweet spot. I don't know. It's kind of hard to make a love letter about an eyeliner, but I just tried. So this is definitely a product I think anyone could get a shit ton of use out of. All right, guys, that is it for my, I don't want to say April or May favorites. It's just current. Anytime I rack up enough products, I will sit down and talk about them with you guys. It's rare that I do this on a monthly basis, but these are the things that are really standing out for me and that I love so much right now. I would love to know what your favorite current, current favorite products are in the down bar below. I am starving. Does anybody else just get like massive brain fog when they're hungry? Because I definitely do. As always, thank you to the patrons. Uh, April content just recently went live over there. I did a really colorful, glittery, teal, smoky eye using the Makeup Geek colorful shadows. I've done tons of tutorials on here. Um, with the neutrals, but that's the first time I've really played like really played with the colorful ones and spoiler alert They worked amazingly well. It's really hard to find a brand who does their colorful shadows as well If not better in some cases than their neutrals and makeup geek just kind of crushes it in that capacity So it's really fun to play with those It kind of ended up looking like the Britney Spears I'm a slave for you video makeup I think in my opinion kind of got vibes and then I also did a video where I talked to you guys all about my old days as a pro MUA and some of the great things and some of the not so great things I experienced during that time. So if you're interested in any of that, the Patreon link is down below. Links to everything I talked about is down below as well. I really appreciate all of you guys watching and hanging out with me today. Check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.